Hello everybody and welcome back to the video on my YouTube channel, I'm Nicholas and it's first day, you know what that means, it's time for another week of Queendom Season 2 performances, uh, just one more week to go, you have already reached the finale, yeah, Queendom 2 is already coming to a close next week, it's been a very enjoyable ride and journey with all of you together joining me every single week as I go through all the performances and this time around we have the three remaining performances performances of round four the fantastic round where the audience suggests the artist's songs for them to perform last week we saw three absolutely incredible performances including bbg performing bop bop we saw kepler covering your generations the boys and alongside heel and so what the, for me thus far best performance within this season wj's and pantomime Today, we are going to be checking out Luna performing one of the biggest hits, probably the biggest hit still to date, Butterfly. We're going to be seeing Re uh, Red Girls, Brave Girls performing Red Sun, and then last but not least, Eolin performing CC. And yeah, three things before I know, before we get started. One, um, it's Father's Day here today in Germany, so I spent some time with my family, which is why I didn't react to this immediately. I mean, it's still... It, the, the, the performances aren't even uploaded for two hours yet, but you know, I usually always try to uh, do these as soon as I possibly can, but you know, to do that a little delay in here, this will now be uploaded. I don't know how, how, how late it will be now in Korea or something like that. I would just upload it as soon as I can, okay? It doesn't matter if it's now 9pm here in Germany or if it's midnight in Korea, I would just upload it as soon as I can. Um... Secondly, what I um, have to say is that, once again, obviously due to copyright reasons, I have to edit the video here on YouTube so um, that it won't be blocked. If you want to see the unedited version, if it distracts you too much, then you can check down below um, in the description or in the pinned comment. There you will find a link to my Google Drive for the unedited version. And number three. Um, which is quite a, yeah, surreal thing to ask, actually. But have you, from any other reactors you may watch, already heard about them getting reached out to about permission to use their Queenium reaction footage? Because that what apparently happened to me. Why am I saying apparently? Well, because I can't tell yet if the email was legit or not, you know? Um, I got an email a few days ago in which I was asked whether or not it would be okay for, apparently... Queen to social to use uh, my footage for TV and CVR purposes, and I think latter is just background stuff. I don't know what's going to happen. I gave my permission to whoever emailed me there. Maybe next week, while you watch episode 10, you will see my head pop up in some way for like a split second or something like that. I don't know what exactly may now happen. Maybe nothing will happen, and maybe it was just a troll, or maybe it is actually legitimate and something will happen. Like mentioned, if you already heard from other reactors that something may similar happen to them, then maybe it is actually legitimate and I will actually appear uh, on the Queendom Season 2 broadcast in some capacity. I will just lean back and see what happens. I like mentioned, can confirm if it's legit or not or what's going to be happening. I will just wait and see what happens next week, okay? It's going to be really interesting to see. Um, so yeah, if you heard anything like that from other reactors already, gladly let me know. But now... Let's stop the talking and let's start reacting. The first performance of today is Luna performing their hit song Butterfly up until Painted Town last year. Um, the most viewed song from Luna on YouTube. We have reacted to it already as well. And I personally gotta say, while I don't dislike the song, I'm not the biggest fan of it either. But I'm still into good to see what they're going to be doing with it here on stage. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get to it. Luna Butterfly. Man, we're actually going to be one of this this one of the final times we're hearing this intro here. Man. It really went by fast. Of the butterfly are eclipsed when the night comes. Subtitles, why not? The butterfly cannot do anything. Though the will to fly towards the morning. Okay, I tried my best to understand everything, but uh, I always prefer subtitles, and I don't know why they can't add them. Like, what is. Wait, what? Wasn't it German? Wait, what? I, I don't know what's. Like, Mnet, come on! Can't be that hard to add subtitles, right? 
Yeah, they look gorgeous on the thumbnail already, though. I didn't mention that. I think this will be a visually very stunning experience. Ooh, what I'm digging. We're doing with the moon in the background. Switching from full to blood moon. Ooh. This sounds a bit more um, mysterious. Ooh, yeah, Fetus is remixed. Should be calmer and more elegant. Oh. That's Heejin, right? Heejin's. Heejin really stood out for me in the unit performance. Still trying to learn all the names, obviously. Head of their comeback! We're getting a Luna comeback. I'm really digging the stage design. It's very, very gorgeous. The classic dance chorus here. But unfortunately also that screechy voice that I'm really not a fan of. Neither here nor in the original. Always a fan of additional stage setups, so that's cool. But why do. But what spiderweb? What's the connection here? Either way, I really like this remix. It's way more classical. Like the original. I think the original was a bit heavier and a bit more electronic. Like this has some ins classic instrumental influences some around. Yeah, this violin here fits the sound really, really good. Ooh, the synchronization though. That's like that, that awesome thing about big groups. When the synchronization is on, when the synchronization is on point, it's such a stunning visual. Awesome though, seriously, the, the visuals of the stage. Oceans. I think this is generally a very emotional song for for Luna, right? Oh, the trust fall! Look at the stage visual here, though. The backup dances with the lightning resembling like the wings of a butterfly. Oh, that's that's very cool. Ooh. The dancing is definitely one of Luna's. Ooh, oh, the little camera shake effect. Yeah. Hell yeah. The, the, the dancing is definitely one of their biggest strengths. <sighs> what a stunning final pose. Ah. Oh. I didn't. I didn't. Fu Wait, how? Wait, I just checked the. Wait, we're already 10. Wait, that was nearly 5 minutes? Oh, damn. I was just looking at, like, oh, damn, we're already nearly 10 minutes. How? And then, oh, performance was just already, like, nearly 5 minutes long. Okay. I think there are a lot of things I could get into here. Um, one of the things that just at the end kind of, like, scratched in there uh, was about, you know, like, the way. Uh, who is it? Like mentioned, Finger was able to tell apart Heejin. Because like mentioned, her, her part of her the unit stage last week was really, really awesome. It really stood out to me, so I like kind of remember her face now. Which part was it? The, the, the girl with the pink hair. 
the way she like performed that, that one vocal there was very very cool. You can like really see the motion in the in the facial expression here. That part it's from her. I think this song is actually like has such a big meaning to not I think just Luna, but I think especially Orbits. Um, now the thing is right that I would not be surprised. Um, like if if the trustful here. They actually even have to do with that, like the connection between between Luna and Orbits. But honestly, actually, before we get fully into that, uh, the, the performance itself, let's actually go a bit into the general performance. The performance was very stunning. I think the the, the main thing about this entire performance is not only the fact that we, like mentioned, I think we remixed the song to be a little bit more classical, a little bit more soft, a little bit more elegant, but also just the entire stage setup. We majority will use the main stage and only like mentioned this one spider web section here um midway through but otherwise mainly use this this main stage but they really did a fantastic job by capitalizing with it like this moon background is very very gorgeous the backup dances with all the lightnings and the way we played around with the with the stage light in general it made for such a stunning visual like visually this was such a incredible experience right like it didn't even talk too much um in between because it was like really focusing on what we're seeing on the screen that's how beautiful um initiated or like insinated insinated the performance was okay i think there was a very very well produced stage right here um, like especially that shot there at the end where the the backup dancers resemble like the, the butterfly wings and here the, the way the butterflies uh, come from behind the, the the moon and everything very very stunning one of the little details I noticed as well that I really enjoyed uh, from the performance itself when we then actually did get to the chorus choreo um, we actually had the the backup dancers go to the sides. Or like the, the first half of it, right? To really put the focus on Luna itself, um, and then like get the backup dancers involved again, you know, to like get and uh, have the stage for themselves during the moment, which is a cool detail to really have them stand out more that way. And that's like mentioned generally the thing about Luna and just generally big big groups, right? Like seventeen as example too, or like NCT. Due to having so many members, when you have such a synchronized choreo on top of that, it's such a stunning visual, okay? Having 12 members and being such in sync like that and performing such a stunning and elegant choreo like that, it makes for such a stunning view, okay? The performance in that sense was really, really good. But now the thing is, now we get back to the song itself. As I already said at the beginning, before we got started, um... While I don't necessarily dislike Butterfly, I'm not the biggest fan of it either. And that's majorly for two things. Um, one, like actually I think it actually is both because it's majority actually the chorus. I don't know, but the chorus is like a bit too typical for me. I remember when, when the reaction, when we reacted to this in the Catching Up on Luna, I was like, hey, the verses and the, the pre-chorus and everything feel very special, feel very, you know, unique and fresh to me. And then the chorus is like a very, very typical electronic dance chorus. It's like very, very generic, okay? I was like, man, this this kind of like you know took a bit out took a bit the the flash out of me because I was like oh well you know that chorus is a bit you know could have could have been in any other song right and the second thing is actually like this very high pitched screechy voice in there it's like it's like really not one of my favorites okay like I definitely prefer Paint the Town as example or um, High High too I think. like Butterfly itself is um, still a good song but it just isn't really for me you know. But that actually gets me to the other point, because I actually think, having read, like on Twitter now in anticipation of this, that I think Butterfly actually has such a deep connection for many, many fans. And I have discovered Luna last year with Paint the Town. I barely have listened to the discography. You know, I barely really even scratched the surface of it. We haven't even reached the door handle to even enter it, basically. Um, so I obviously don't have that connection yet with them um, and with their songs and everything, you know. But there are obviously fans out there that have been with Luna since the beginning that were there when the song released and everything. So um, with that knowledge that this is such a meaningful song um, for, for many, many fans, then obviously that adds a lot of weight to the performance itself. So while for me, the song itself really isn't my thing and I obviously don't really have the connection neither to the song nor to Luna yet, this performance obviously feels a bit, you know, while it was visually stunning, it really didn't impact me that much, you know. While I can totally imagine that some orbits may have gotten emotional by this, 
or because like mentioned was like mentioned very beautifully incinerated performance you know visually so i would totally not blame you if you're a huge fan of the song itself and if you um like absolutely love this performance because of the meaning the song and the group itself has to you i don't really have that connection there yet right which therefore i honestly have to say I don't even want to say least favorite nor weakest because I always think it kind of sounds negative without it even actually being dead, right? And I always kind of feel like I have to um, double explain many things before people get a bit upset at it. But I think I actually not only preferred the free performance on last week over this one, but I think I also preferred all the other Lunar performances over this one. I think it was actually visually for the stage probably their best yet. Like the way the entire, you know, uh, stage was incinerated, even though the Paint the Town performance was also very awesome. Actually, never mind. Like the, the Paint the Town performance with the classical um, Korean traditional look was awesome. You know, the Shake It stage was very creative and very, very cool and fun to watch. And the two unit stages were also very cool, especially the second one, especially the dance unit one. So, yeah, I honestly have to say. As good the performance still was, and as I mentioned, awesome and stunning it was to watch. The song just really isn't for me, which is why I think I definitely prefer last week's performances thus far more. And why I think that this is, at least in my opinion, their weakest performance yet. Like, from across the season. I think the other performances from 1, 2, and 3 were definitely better. And I have no issue if you disagree with that, okay? If some of you, like mentioned, have a deep connection with the song and Luna and therefore have this this emotional kind of um feeling while watching this performance then that is totally okay you know that's that's what we're here for you know that's the magic of music you know what what is some one person's you know like whatever type of song is for another person one of the most special songs they've ever listened to and that's totally fine so while I think that thus far this performance takes rank four for me in round four and it's definitely um, my least favorite Luna performance within this season. I still think it's a good performance. It was visually very, very stunning. And as mentioned, if you love it, because you have, like mentioned, that connection to the song itself, then I will have no issues with that at all. I will totally, you know, feel you in that. Because I've had performances before where, you know, having a big connection to the song really, really evaluated the feelings um, with it. I'm just now noticing the artist, the Luna Light Sticks, those look pretty damn cool. Looks like a, like a scepter. Looks pretty awesome, but I'm getting distracted. Okay, Luna's Butterfly. The song just really isn't for me. It's just really um, one of those type of choruses and with that high screech voice and everything in there. It just really isn't my type of song. If it's your type of song, if this, like mentioned, increased your um, emotion within the performance, then it's totally okay um, for me. I would thus far rank it on four. Gotta be honest. Okay. Let's move on from Luna Dome. I'm still very excited, like mentioned, for the comeback that we're going to be having uh, next month. And obviously, their new song releasing tomorrow too. Yeah, we're definitely going to be checking all of that out as well. But now, up next, we're going to be checking out Brave Girls performing Red Sun. And that is actually quite an interesting pick. Because if I'm not mistaken, wasn't it more like a side release? Like mentioned, I barely really... Um, experienced the rise of Brave Girls last year. Like I mentioned, I've still not checked on one Brave Girls music video yet. The only Brave Girls um, listening experience I've had were here on Queendom. Uh, but I remember f um, seeing that Red Sun was actually more like a... Yeah, more like a side thing. I think this wasn't even released on their official channel. So I'm interested to see why they exactly picked the song um, for this or why it was suggested. Thus far, Brave Girls for me has been... I don't know, I feel like the girls are talented. But I think the songs they've performed yet didn't really showcase it so well. Like they did the cover of MBSK, which was like I think a remix or so, which was cool and one, but just not just the weakest performance of the of the round for me. But like the first song especially, and I think just Rolling in general, you know, like I've heard now Rolling so many times in sense of um like I haven't listened to the full song actually yet, but like the chorus over and over from edits and everything. I feel like the, the sound they're usually going for is not the best to really fully showcase their their talents because we did actually um, get to see, I think, Min Young in the vocal stage with Heo Lin, and then ENG in the dance unit stage with Luna. I think that's where the best performances involving Brave Girls as far as this tournament. Tournament in this season. So yeah, let's see how Red Sun will be like. I'm excited nonetheless to see what Brave Girls can bring to the table in round four ahead of the finale. Brave Girls, Red Sun. Let's check it out. 
Six minutes? Oh boy. What, 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 how are we going to fail? Six minutes. Oh wow, that dress is gorgeous. Okay, Instagram post from 220. Sorry, before we continue, I feel like what we're about to see may be very important. It may impact the performance, you know, like understanding what, what we're being shown here. So... There's like one hour in between the, the the performance finishing, like being shown. Like, aren't these like actually pre-recorded? Where those those weren't actually alive, right? I think these weren't actually like um, performed live um, as a showcase thing, right? I don't think they have like performances at like 11 p.m. K KC and everything. So why can't we add subtitles? Man, can't be that hard. Can't be that hard to add some subtitles. We give everybody some context. The 17, that's when Roland originally released, yeah. <laughs> of, like, yeah, I think there's some type of career throwback. That's the... Ooh, damn! I was just about to say, that's dangerous, be careful. Ouch! My arm hurt. Just for watching, but I can I understood the visuals and what we're trying to portray here, and now especially with this this line here. But it's really not too much to ask for. Okay, obviously not on the girls, but on production here. Oh, was it? A fi yes, Cinderella, right? Cinderella with the, with the shining boots and everything. And Brave Gold's rise can definitely be considered a Cinderella story. What type of sound are we going for now? Okay, that's actually, again, oh, they look, man, they look so gorgeous, look at the dress, seriously, but, I actually thought the performance would go a bit more emotional sound-wise, but it's actually kind of, the dress, but it actually goes a bit heavier. Wait, what? Yo, this is some straight up dubstep! I don't know why. But... This song, like... So does not fit neither the stage visual nor the nor that background thing we did. Like I can't even really categorize the diverse picture, but the chorus was straight up dubstep. <laughs> It's like so... I don't know. Kinda... Maybe that's what we actually wanted to do. We have like this... Contrast. Where's that? Watch obviously, but... 
and Mama again. Oh, isn't that the Cinderella theme? And the performance is obviously about showcasing their history and their rise and how they... Oh, that bridge was wonderful! That was 100% the best part of the performance. But now... And then straight after... We dive back into this... Very generic dubstep sound. And it kind of actually... And it kind of actually really... Is exactly what I t meant before the before the performance. Oh, don't cry! Y'all got that Cinderella story. Y'all got that. Okay. <sighs> ah. Okay. So. Like mentioned, one of the big main issues for me here was not getting subtitles here because I think even though I obviously got the main core theme of what, what we were portrayed here, I think understanding everything maybe would have added a bit more. But honestly, even if I did understand everything that was said there, I feel like this performance... <sighs> Man... The thing right now for me is, I feel like, for every for those of you that have watched like every single Queendom 2 reaction from me thus far, I feel like some people may think I dislike Brave Girls and like, I don't know, hate them or anything like that, because I've always spoken from them in a kind of negative way and always like put them on last place and everything. But like, I just again, after watch performance, Feel more or like I have more questions after the performance and like you know questioning thoughts than like big excitement or anything because I feel like the idea we went for for this is actually really awesome because obviously when you think of Brave Girls when you hear the name Brave Girls nowadays um, the one thing that you think about is the story. You know, Brave Girls, it's such an incredible story. Now, what is the surprise that there has not been a documentary done about it yet? Because obviously, even though I, like mentioned, have not seen any Brave Girls music video yet and really only, like, heard it um, on the side basically throughout last year, the Cinderella story with Brolin getting viral uh, four years after its release, bringing them back onto music shows, giving them their first ever music show win, I think Roland having a perfect all kill of like 331 hours or something like that, it was a, it was such a story, right? The stories we all live for, you know, these underdog stories, these big, big um, emotional um, stories that everybody loves to see, right? And we wanted to showcase that story here by going back in time, showing the beginning, showing the, the, the tough times with like falling down but standing up because I won't give up. And even like mentioned resembling that Cinderella story visually by actually doing the Cinderella story, you know, by with the with the with the shoes and everything. But then we kinda throw a song onto that idea and story that we're telling. It just doesn't really fit at all, at least sound-wise. I actually, I'm actually going to be checking the lyrics because maybe the lyrics, and that's why actually they they chose. But actually, I'm not sure. Did the did the fans actually decide the song, or did they just suggest so but they ultimately still picked it for themselves? Because the song itself, like mentioned, the verse picture was already a bit like okay, strong bass and everything. Okay, okay, interesting. But the chorus is like such a once again, such a very typical generic sound. Um, like in this case, especially like literal dubstep. And it just kind of is so far away from, from the story you're telling you. Because I feel like this the story that we're telling you, the Cinderella story, is like something so emotional, so special. And kind of invites for something emotional. But then instead of capitalizing on that in the song cho choice as well, we actually go ahead and like mention 
put out a song once again that not only feels very, you know, typical, you know, like the, the song itself was like really anything explosive or something like that. It just kind of, it just kind of doesn't fit to me. Unless, like mentioned, the, the lyrics kind of fit. Look at me now, look at me now. I mean, okay, that's, I guess that kind of, that kind of fits. The, 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 I think that's the bridge here, that part. I'm not sure, but you like some of the lyrics does kind of do kind of fit. Okay, I think some of the lyrics kind of fit here, but honestly, yeah. Okay, so the only other idea I think that they were going for here is to actually like mention because maybe some of the lyrics fit. Okay, but I still feel like visually and with the story in mind, it just kind of. Feels like an odd choice to combine. Unless, like mentioned, we really wanted to have that be like the, the, the idea behind this instead of like, okay, we had a rough start and then we had that Cinderella story going on and now we can celebrate and that's why we go for this party type of sound, okay? That's the only other thing. But honestly, what I think should have been done here, now that I look at, this, at the song, because some lyrics do fit, some lyrics do kinda support the story we're trying to tell here but the sound just really doesn't fit into it in my opinion or at least like i don't know the original maybe the original actually is different or something like that but like okay first of all <laughs> the stage will actually sound like they look absolutely gorgeous and that's actually where we're going back onto the song where i think the brave girls is really talented but as far as the songs they performed just don't really do it for me either that or i think the songs just really don't fully showcase the potential they have um but yeah what i'm trying to say is what we should have done Okay, we want to tell the story of Brave Girls' rise from, I think, close to this band band, and I'm not sure if they were new girls back then, but just generally Brave Girls' Cinderella story. We're trying to tell that story, and then we, after this intro, we kind of want to follow up on it, right? What we should have done is not do this here, but in the finale. Because, in the finale, in the fifth round, we're having the opportunity to write a new song. I think you already understand what I'm trying to go here, right? Or go for here, right? Because I think actually one of the earliest complaints, I think it was actually after round one, I'm not sure, was like, yeah, this type of sound here, like it's it's fun, but like mentioned, very, very typical. I think you, you could choose something more fitting for Queendom, right? For, for this entire atmosphere and idea of everybody versus everybody. So just imagine we pick this idea of this storyline that we and the Cinderella story that we're trying to portray and then write a song around it and produce a song around it. So no very typical dubstep type of sound and EDM feelings and everything we make an epic somewhat emotional elegant song that like has such an epic instrumental maybe like epic trumpets violins just something very very royal and regal with a strong chorus with vocal showcase with lyrics that are like exactly written about us that like literally just tell the story from the start, you know, where we start maybe even calmer and then we like build the song towards a big conclusion, towards a big finale with big high notes and everything, you know, like I saw Min Young uh, with Healing together performing strong high notes, so I know they can do that now, or like at least one of the members. Just imagine how awesome that could have been. You know, to fully capitalize on the Cinderella story that everybody, like, that when you hear about Brave Girls, think about. Capitalizing on that and showcasing that in a song so lowly written that to, to showcase exactly that in a theme fitting for this Queendom type of environment. Epic, regal, royal, stunning, elegant, and just, you know, I kind of feel like this is wasted potential. And I think that kind of is really the story of Brave Goods for me thus far. Like my impression on them throughout Queen. Because like mentioned, that's my only real impression on them thus far. This 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 season here, this this environment. I haven't listened to like mentioned any of their other songs at full outside of these reactions here. I feel like they have the talent and I feel like they have great voices and everything. But the songs and the way the stages were done thus far just really don't do them justice. This idea of trying to tell the Cinderella story on a stage... It's so, so cool and so, so special. 
because there is such a deep emotional meaning behind it and she even nearly cried right just imagine this story being told and portrayed in a song specifically written especially for it with a sound that just suits it because this sound just doesn't suit the story okay and again i'm a bit i find it a bit unfortunate that that i talk in a way like this again for a brave girl's performance because for both round one and two it was like a you know song is okay but doesn't you know weakest performance for me then a same thing again for the second round and now again i would love to just be like wowed by the performance and just praise them and just you know be like wow that performance was everything i have nothing to complain about i like wow this is like you know perfect i sadly have don't have to get again because now especially that I think about the, the, the potential and the idea that we could have done with, with this in the finale. Just kind of makes me, you know, again think, man. The girls are talented, but they, but they aren't really able to fully showcase it yet. Or like, in comparison to the others. I would really love to know your opinion on this. I really now went deep dive into, into the thoughts here. Because, I don't know, this kind of... It kind of disappoints me in that sense. Because I unfortunately have to get in this four, put this on five. Because even though I love the story, like mentioned, it's it's so cool and it's so emotional. And I, it, it, it's like it's such a big story to tell. But the song just doesn't fit it. It's like two complete opposites thrown together. You know? Again, maybe that was what they were trying to go for. Like, celebrate now their story and everything. But it still then kind of makes me think, hey... They could have been implemented and just executed so, so much better with a song that just fits it so, so much better. And if they don't have a song like that yet, that really speaks on that uh, story and that really fits the, the theme of it, then just take the opportunity and make the new song for it. <sighs> we are closing on to the 40 minutes already, holy moly. Um, which is why I will now stop here. Um, but yeah, this is honestly a bit disappointing to me. Because, like, I don't think we're, like, they've done it here now, you know, so they won't be doing it in the in the other round now. And I, um, don't know yet how the sixth song will be like, like, the sixth song, or, like, their performance will be like in the final, and how the song they will be like in the fifth round, not sixth. But, man. Brave girls, brave girls, brave girls. I'm really, like, I really, really want to love what I'm seeing, but I just kind of can, because it just isn't as good as it could be. That is for me thus far the story of Brave Girls throughout Queendom. The story of Brave Girls and their rise to success with Roland is gorgeous and everything, but thus far the story of, of Brave Girls for me throughout this I don't know. I don't know how, how people rank this and how the ranking here ultimately ended up being. Maybe people love this, you know, like I talked about it for the Butterfly Luna performance already. The song wasn't really my thing, so, you know, if other people love it, then it's totally fine to me. Maybe you actually totally love this and think it was, like, a special performance and everything, like, really fit in everything. Then gladly tell me your thoughts down below. We really love to read them because for me, unfortunately, the idea was great, but the song choice with it was just really not ideal and the idea we had could have been done in the finale in a epic way which kind of yeah man nearly 40 minutes like mentioned we gotta we gotta keep going can't i can't be going into nearly 60 minutes for free performances holy moly which is why we're now moving over okay breath goes to red sun i really really try my best to to like or like really really love what brave girls is putting out in this season but i just kind of can't can't say the same thing for healing though because after her first round performance which was um also like good and everything but like nothing too special me it blew me out of the water or, like absolutely blew my mind with her so what performance and then absolutely killed it in both of the um unit stages too which i'm now which now is why i'm excited to see her perform c c bay I think the base actually added here, right? I think the original is actually called CC. Generally, very clever. CC sounds the same. Two different words. Let's see what she has in store for us again. She really, really changed my mind on her. Like mentioned at first, I was like, hey, okay. Like, they, she generally, she basically did what I think Brave Goats can still do for me. You know, like, I feel like, okay, I, I love the voice and everything. I feel like she really has to tell. But as far, the performances really haven't been showing that as that well and then boom she exactly did that to really showcase me uh, what she can do so let's see what her 
um, performance can do. The final performance of Queen of Two, round four. C, C, Bay, Bahelian. Let's check it out. C, C, Bay sounds very tropical though. Yeah, very summery. I guess that's the original. Who that though? I think Healing is the one, yeah, in the jacket. Oh, she's now seeing the girl listening to her song. Oh, never mind. <laughs> never mind, there she is. Okay. Okay, lifeguard. Yeah, we're going all out into the summer beach concept here. Yeah, this definitely already goes a bit more into the uh, first round performance. Ooh, I like the, the way the verse was done here. Because I haven't listened to it originally yet. Because I haven't said it yet. Her live vocals are honestly so good. I love her hair though. I I really love her short hair a lot. It, oh. Man, I love how we had such a powerful vocal there and then for the chorus. Actually switch to this very sultry, calm delivery now. She's having fun. It really, really reminds me of the first round performance. A bit more of a lighthearted. Oh, oh, they just change clothes where we move forward on healing. All right, but again, very cool. It is more of the stage that way, short but sweet. I take it. Oh, let's go with the drink. The song is really fun though. Ooh, the neon light. Oh! Camera effect! Ooh! Oh, I love the shake, the shake effects. That's really dope. Oh, that dance break was cool. Short, on point, heavy. Visually cool too. Wait, are some fans having the caps on too? <laughs> Give me more vocals, come on! Hell yeah! <laughs> Car is very fun too, but who is she though? Yeah, actually, some things have the caps on. That's pretty fun, but hey, do I do I know her? Do I know her? 
Like, man, she's having so much fun throughout this. Okay, I kind of got distracted by so many things there at the end. Like, first the fans with the caps and the dance break and everything. But okay, so... I can still just say, like I said it after the So What performance already... But um, I think it's, I wouldn't be surprised if it's a very, very um, common opinion, but Helen 100% keeps delivering the best vocal performances within this season, okay? Like mentioned, the So What high notes were absolutely mind-blowing, and now here in CC Bay, the um, high notes here now near the end in the bridge were also spectacular, okay? Um, the thing is now... So what definitely spoke to me sonically more, you know, just the sound of the song itself. So I definitely will still prefer that um, performance over this one. But this performance was like just a very, very fun time, okay? Like, Mesh, it's kind of um, similar to the first round performance, you know, a bit more bright, a bit more upbeat, a bit more lovely, a bit sexy, you know, and just, just a very fun time all the way through, right? Like, for the first one, we had this very tropical jungle type of theme. This summer round, we have the beach theme, we have the backup dancers on like yeah we like mentioned this cool little metro station there uh which made for a cool little um intro and a um, moment within within the performance the dance break section was absolutely excellent you know the way we used those um those outfits to then turn the lights down for the for the neon showcase basically that way it was very very creative and very very enjoyable and again she just has a excellent voice and um why I like mentioned after the like I already said in the opening performance I remembered it very well where she only sang like for five seconds or so was so like oh I really like her voice I'm excited uh, her voice uh, her voice um, I'm really excited to to hear more of her um, and then in the first one like mentioned was a bit more of a fun lighthearted track and then like mentioned so what and then especially the Min Young stage really really showcases vocals in this song also once again just really really perfectly showcases her variety because especially like mentioned in, in the point in the beginning where she had like a very very strong note for the pre-chorus then when the chorus came around so smooth sailed over the beat there um straight after that it was such a great visual uh, visual showcase distracted by the visually because like mentioned i absolutely love her short hair but it was such a great um vocal showcase there again because she just so seemingly switched from strong powerful and very like very crisp delivery to very smooth sounding like fitting for the for the summer theme and, and type you know healings bay 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 cc bay the title is definitely a tongue breaker um if I had to rank it in between her other performances, so what like Vinci is definitely still first, I do think I definitely enjoyed this more than her first round performance. In comparison to the rest of round four, I think it's tough. Now that we basically we can already kind of move here to the end. Like uh, honestly, I spent so much time for both the Loon and Brave Goat stage because it was like so much to talk about, like so much to go into about the songs themselves. Here, like mentioned, it was really more of a lighthearted, fun stage. You know, it was just it was just a fun time, right? Like it, it, the the performance, everything, a lot of cool highlights that I already pointed out this time around. I don't really need to go into detail that much. So I think we can already actually move over um, to the rankings now. And I 100% remain with WJS and one I think Pandemium is definitely alongside Heal and so on. The best performance throughout the season thus far. Then when it comes to the bottom ranks. I would definitely unfortunately once again put Brave Girls there. Like I mentioned I love the idea behind the story they were going for. But ultimately the song choice just kind of really made it messy. I think that's I think that's the best word there for me for the production idea. Because, like, the stage was great and everything, they looked gorgeous, they sounded good nonetheless, but, like, the song just really didn't fit the theme and just confused me, which just ultimately really affected my um, enjoyment of the stage overall, which is why I think I unfortunately have to put them on 6 again, which, it, it sounds so mean, because I think in all the non-unit rounds now, they've, they've ranked last place for me. But, like, the, I see the talent still there, but, like... I think the performances really haven't been ideal for them, or, like, the song choices in them, I think they can... Do much much more um but yeah so wjs and a one and um brave girls on six and now the rest 
So I definitely, like mentioned, think Kepler was cooler and better than BBG. So now it's all about Luna and Healing. Luna's performance, like mentioned, was visually very stunning and I love the, the, the idea behind it, but I'm just not the biggest fan of the song, which obviously then affects my enjoyment of the, of the performance itself. Um, Kepler's cover of The Boys was absolutely insane. Yeah, I think it was the best performance yet to date. While I um, think for BBG's performance, like mentioned, was also fun and everything, but kind of lacked something. So I think... It's tough for me. I think my rankings for the for the remaining places. Like I mentioned, I love Luna's visual stage, but the, the song itself just really. Like I mentioned, I don't dislike it, but I think when I compare it to the, I think that's really where it's going out to, to now. I think you just have to compare the songs now, actually, you know, because the stages were like really really good in their own way each. I think I actually have to put Luna on 5th, which I really didn't expect, because I think they ranked 1st and 2nd place in round 1 and 2 each. And like mentioned, then the Luna um, unit stage for the dance run also won 1st place for me. So, actually a bit surprised about like when you really probably had to do with the song choice. If they did a different song, it would have probably been better for me, but I'm just... <sighs> I don't know, the song just really isn't for me, which is unfortunate, but it's just sadly how it is. Um, so, like, yeah, I think I have to put Luna on 5th. Then I think I would put BBG on four. While as much as uh, as much as Umji with Red Hair absolutely murdered me, and it, the song was fun and everything, it had a cool dance break and whatnot, it just kind of was a bit too normal to really still stand out. Um, or like like didn't really have a big color neither in the choreo nor in the vocals. So yeah, I think that's how it is. Brave Gold sixth, Luna fifth, BBG fourth. Actually, I think I think BBG and Luna kind of contest themselves for fourth and fifth year because I think Luna's stage was visually better, but I think I enjoyed uh, BBG stage for the sound a bit more. And then for the other performances, I would say um, definitely like Major WJ's at a one, and then Kepler in two and Healing on three. I think I like mentioned. I think I think Kepler's best performance in the tournament. For why do I still say tournament? Within the season, it's definitely definitely needs to rank higher than this healing performance right here, which was I mentioned very fun and very great, cool choreo, great vocals yet again. But I think Kepler's performance had a bit more highlights in there for me, which is why I think that's my ultimate ranking for round four. Now we chase Anna one, Kepler on two, healing on three. Um, BBG and Luna battling each other for 4 and 5 with tending to BBG for 4 because I enjoyed the song a bit more and that ultimately is more important to me than the, than the visuals of the stage and Brave of course unfortunately again on 6th damn that was a very very long reaction to just 3 performances I simply had to talk a lot about um, the Luna stage due to you know my Thoughts and feelings about the song and how that affects my enjoyment of the stage overall. But especially here to talk a lot about the Brave Goat story that they were trying to tell. But how the song choice kind of really intervened with it. But we then had a more lean back fun time with Hill and uh, CC Bay. This wraps up the final performances to run 4. And our second to last Queen of Week overall. I still had a lot of fun today, even though it was definitely a bit of a different feeling overall now due to having to talk more than actually watch. Um, and hope you had a lot of fun with my reaction. If you did, glad you liked your below to show me that you did. What are your thoughts on today's performances, of last week's performances? How does your ranking of round 4 um, finalized now look like? Do you 100% disagree with everything I said? Or do you agree with me? Or can you understand me? Tell me all your thoughts about my thoughts and opinions and the performances down below as well. And as always, if you enjoy what I'm doing, if you want to support me, you can gladly sub as well. Also, pop on Patreon or leave a super thanks to you on YouTube. It would tell me a lot. Tomorrow. Already, we're back with Queendom because tomorrow, actually 5 a.m. for me here in, in Germany, we will be getting the six new songs. One new song of each um, candidate. And while I already saw that they released a very little teaser um, for each song, I think. I don't know, maybe I will check it out, maybe not. Um, yeah, it's happening tomorrow. And I will actually be awake around the time, because 17 will also have to come. But we'll obviously have to wait for lyric videos. So I think it will take a while before we actually get to them. But we will be doing that tomorrow, so look forward to that. And other than that, obviously, the finale of Queendom Season 2 next week, where we then get to see those new songs um, performed live on stage. 
I'm very excited, looking forward to a lot, and we have a lot of other great cable content coming up. So for whatever content you may be interested in, for whatever content you may want to in for, I'll be seeing again soon on this channel. Stay safe, healthy and happy. Have a great time. Have a great remaining time, week, and everything. And see you tomorrow already again with the Queendom. Actually, what means tomorrow? For most of you, it's already today, actually. With the new Queendom songs and more cable reactions. Thank you so much for watching.